How you doing, Jay? Oh, I'm great. I'm so happy to be back. Yes. Urban League. Yes. So that's big and um, big conference coming here. Tell us a little bit about that if you don't mind. Yeah, this is um, the 99th year of the Urban Leagues. If you're planning to come, please come out. And I will tell you that the Urban League, you should be very proud in this community. Urban League is the premier chapter of any Urban League in this country. I mean, you all have the best. St. Louis. St. Louis has wow. the best. You've got the national... Chair, board chair of the National Urban League who lives in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Of course, the local chair board. Michael McMillan is phenomenal. Shout out to Michael McMillan. He is, he He's is from, I mean, absolutely phenomenal. And the programs that they have, because I was here a couple of years ago, and I spent the entire day just going around visiting different programs. And when I tell you they are getting things done, mm -hmm. they are transformational, yes. people's lives are being enriched change, people's lives are being saved. And I just cannot say enough about Michael, his leadership, and the team that he has built here in St. Louis. And so when I tell you they are noticed as the very best awesome. in all the nation of the Urban League, it's because you all are making it happen right here. Well, July 26th through 29th, of course, is the National Urban yeah. League Conference here yes. in St. Louis. So we're excited to be a part of that. Um, you've done so many phenomenal things and continue to do a lot of incredible things in the community. Um, what's happening with the Philando Castile situation? Yes, I am. Um, and, and thank you for following that because you've mm -hmm. had me on before to talk about that. I will tell you, this is the first time in history that a police officer has ever been charged. I didn't say wow. found guilty, even charged with a fatal shooting of a citizen. In history? In history. In this country? In, in Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota. In Minnesota. Okay. First time in the state of Minnesota. I mean, we're talking about, what, 2000, yeah. 2017, 16? I mean, it's just craziness. But I am so pleased that that's happened. I think the prosecutor has shown a lot of guts. Um, but this is a case, if we can't get this one right, I don't know how we get it right. Hmm. Because this is a guy who was doing everything right. Wow. You know, he pulled over. He um, he told them that he was he was permitted to carry a gun. When the police asked for his registration and license, he was getting it. And when he was in the process of getting, he was shot seven times. You know. So the criminal case will start May thirty. May thirtieth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Criminal side. Okay. We have uh, Judge Glenda Hatchett here with us, uh, the keynote speaker at the uh, Urban League dinner this evening in St. Louis right now, and when we come back, I want to just kind of get your thoughts on just what maybe young black men need to do as it relates to sure. their engagement with the police, oh, absolutely. juvenile justice, and also um, President Trump, if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right. All right, STL's Hip Hop and R&B is 100.3 to beat. Oh, say the dark secret. And Judge Hatchet are here. I'm so glad to have you here, I Judge Hatchet. I'm so glad to be what here. What you represent, what you embody. Thank you. Um, and the work that you're doing, of course, uh, last week we were just talking about Philando Castile. Obviously, you've been representing him. Right. And right. his family. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that it's the first time in Minnesota State's history right. that a police officer was charged. Right. And right. um, I think that speaks volumes, and you're leading the charge on this case. Um, wanted to just ask you your thoughts on the state of black men in this country. Uh, you know, certainly after this election, a lot of people don't know what to make of things. And there's a lot of tension, a lot of, I think, a lot of energy, uh, or even fear. And frustration. And frustration. A lot of fear and frustration. I what would you say to people now? Well, what I, what I have said is that we have got to really be clear that we've got to make our own magic that we've got to make it happen, that we cannot rely on who's in the White House, and that we have got to be reached deep into our souls. You know, we have got to build stronger coalitions in our community. We have also got to be clear that we have to reach beyond our community for mm -hmm. alliances yeah. that are productive. But I also hope um, that out of this will come a wake-up call, because it still bothers me when celebrities, athletes will say, well, I'd even bother the vote. And I'm saying then, you know, how can you be critical of the situation if you didn't get up and vote? The millions of women across the world, and particularly the nation, the day after the inauguration, and I kept kind of thinking, I was very pleased and proud, but I kept thinking, 
do all of them get out and vote? You know, and so maybe this is a catalyst because I remind people that we are a resilient people. You know, we are people who survived slavery, who, dis you know, the dark days of a segregated society, the hollow promises of affirmative action, and we've arrived not only to a new century, a new millennium, and we have got to understand that if our ancestors could build institutions with the little they had, then why are we letting our colleges and universities close mm. with all that we have, with all the advantages that we have? How can we, and that to me is a disrespect to the people who sacrificed for us to get here. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta do better. And we gotta go back to some basics too um, with our families, particularly with our boys. And I say this because I have sons, they're, they're adults now, but you know, we gotta insist on greatness from our boys. You know, just like we go, we have certain standards for our daughters, then who will they marry? Mm -hmm. If we aren't raising up a generation of strong black men, who will our daughters be with? How will we have strong families? And I get emotional about this because, you know, parents will say, well, so-and-so's, you know, is letting their kid do this. Well, I'm saying, but, you know, what do you think? What standards are you setting for your children? What are your expectations? You know, I set high spe expectations for my sons. My parents wanted me to do well. You know, and so I look at a grandmother on my mother's side who didn't even finish elementary school, a grandmother on my father's side who went to Spelman, but both of them worked all their lives as domestics. I don't get it twisted. And so I have a responsibility to honor my ancestors, but also to pour into this generation. You know, when we, uh, do you got time for one more break, Judge? Yes. Okay, yes. so Judge Glenda Hatchett is here. You know, I'm sorry, Judge my Hatchett. answers were so long. No, absolutely. And you got a new TV show coming. When we come back, I want to make sure we address that and also get your thoughts on this uh, current presidency and uh, just what's happening with that. You're here this evening speaking, keynote speaker. Keynote speaker. At the Urban League dinner. Dinner. So um, if you don't have your tickets, I hope you go get them. Um, out there, of course, the Urban League uh, National Conference is July 26th through the 29th, and uh, we discuss and all of that right here. Right. It's 100.3 to beat. All right, SCL's Hip Hop and R&B is 100.3 to beat. Don't say the dark secret. Judge Hatchet is here with us, and uh, we're just vibing on a lot of different things happening in our community. Um, she's the keynote speaker this evening at the Urban League dinner. Um, we salute you on giving back and doing all these wonderful Thank things you. for the community. You have a show. I have a show. Tell us about yeah. that. That's started started last fall. Um, it is called The Verdict with Verdict. Judge Hatchet. The original show is still on the air in syndication. So we had to come up with a new title. It's a different studio. It's Entertainment Studios, which is owned by a black man. Wow. So I'm, I'm proud to be a part of that network. And so The Verdict with Judge Hatchett, and it's on various places. It's syndicated, so you'll have to kind of look, check the listings. But also, it's on Justice Central, which is the channel that Byron Allen, who owns Entertainment Studios, owns. So Byron you can Allen catch it lots of places. Yeah, oh, and he key. and he just he just signed a deal with Directv that adds 40 more households wow. for Justice Central to be in. Wow. So we were talking last week on the phone about that. So I'm excited about that. That. You know, it's fun to be back. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Um, one of the other questions I wanted to ask you uh, uh, was this new administration, yeah. um, President Trump, um, what are your feelings, your thoughts just on, you know, what's... Um, what's now coming down the pike? What's coming down the pike? Yeah, what's coming down the pike is that we have got to be more alert and more vigilant and more active than we've ever been. Um, it is what it is. And we are either going to end up staying at the pity party and complaining about how bad things are and be victims, or we're going to be victorious. And I'm saying that we as people have got to decide that we're not going to be victims, we're not going to be stuck at the pity party, that we're going to have to figure out how we're going to be victorious. And that's going to mean that we got to put aside some of our petty nonsense craziness and that we've got to understand that we have got to 
build strong, strong coalitions and a relationships within our community and then we're going to have to partner with other people yeah. you know that we cannot do this in isolation too many of our children are dying too many of our elderly people are, are, are suffering and we have such a high percentage of black boys dropping out of school in some communities this is high as 82 percent and what does that say? Because a person who drops out of school is three and a half times more likely to have a criminal record. And so if we know these things, why aren't we being more proactive? And we have got to not wait for some somebody on a white horse to come riding through. We gotta figure some of this out. Absolutely. Um, anything you wanna to say to St. Louis? Yeah, I am, um, I'm excited to be back. I was here a couple of years ago and honestly, I'll say it was my privilege to go and spend the whole day at different programs that Urban League is doing. And if you aren't really plugged into what they're doing, you need to pay attention. Saving Our Sons program is miraculous. The drug rehab program for women and men is amazing. There are people who didn't freeze to death last winter because of assistance for energy that they got through the Urban League. You know, there are, I mean, there are just so many great programs. And I would just say, you know, volunteer. You know, write a check if you can. But pay attention because there's great work going on right here in this community that's making an amazing difference. Yeah. An amazing. And I need to tell you about my law firm. Absolutely. The Hatchet Firm. Please. The Hatchet Firm, national law firm based in Atlanta, decided to step beyond the bench. That's why I'm doing the Castile, Philando Castile case. And um, I've taken on another police shooting case down in Florida. But I really think that I can make a difference in cases. So I'm specializing in wrongful death, catastrophic injuries, and police shootings. Wow. So thehatchetfirm.com. Thehatchetfirm.com. Um, Judge Hatchet, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, follow us on social media. Please. Follow us on social media. At the at the Judge Hatchet. Be Judge Hatchet. Be Judge Hatchet. <laughs> Somebody tried to be Judge Hatchet on the social media, right? And the uh, phone number one eight four four Hatchet. H A T C H E T T. Thank you so, so much. So let's hear from you. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Thank you. No, Judge Hatchet. It's an honor. Shout to Naima, making it happen. Naima Rashad, yeah. CEO yeah. of Judge Hatchet Worldwide. They, oh, Woo! wait a minute. Oh. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. CEO, you hear me? Empowering. I CEO. like what you're doing, Judge yeah. Hatchet. Yeah, I and mean, you got to do it. You see talented people, you got to yeah. You got to empower them. Naima people call me up. I say, look, you got to talk to Naima. <laughs> <laughs> people call me. I say, I don't know. You better call Naima. On she is she on is it. On I am job. so blessed to have her as part of the team. Yeah. I didn't say work for me. Yeah. I said part of the team. Say it again, though. I didn't say work for me. I said part of the team. CEO. Empowerment. Listen, <laughs> that, that alone right there, and, I, and I'm going to end on this note, just as I said before, I mean, empowering one another is, a, is an amazing thing. It is. And for us as a people, I think we need to get past a lot of the pettiness, right. a lot of the things that hold us, you know, back in, you know, it's been perpetuated, you know, from it slavery has. into now. It has. But it is it important has. that we acknowledge it and we do our best, best to, to uh, yeah. Right. So thank you. Thank you. Judge Glenda Hatchett, the verdict is the show. Thank her so much for coming through St. Louis. Uh, the Urban League dinner is this evening. She's the keynote speaker. And you know it's going to be phenomenal. Make sure you're there. It's 100.3 to be. Yep. Yeah.